I'm in an insane asylum. I can't get out. Please come get me. The whole world is crazy. They're all on crack, except for me. Come get me. I can't take it anymore. I'm losing my mind. I'm losing my mind because of all these crazy people. I'm the only normal person on the planet. Help! You're me, and I'm me, that I'm happy. I'm me. You know, the, the idea is that years and years ago, maybe not more than a hundred or so, that people came to L.A. to make movies with a dream, but they had this incredible dream that they, they could make wonderful movies. And they weren't really bound by certain criteria or expectations. They were just, they didn't even care if they had an office, but they, they finally figured out a way to make a place where people could meet and work together called a studio. A studio other than for distribution purposes, I'm not sure about that. But the dream was that, how can we make great movies? Well, we need sound stages and we need places where we can bring people to make movies in one area. So we'll create a studio so that everybody can be in one place at the same time. Movies together. And, but I think the original pioneers wouldn't have really worried about, would have really just wanted to shoot, shoot on the street and just shoot, just use existing props, not, not really needing to, to, to design or build anything. Just have to use what, what has already been built, what's already sculptured around us as props to tell a story in real life in the 90s, which would be much, which in a way is a period piece if you were watching this in the millennium of 2050 or 2095. You know, that's how, that's how it looked way back then. And this could be like viewed like a silent film that was made, say, 75 years ago or a hundred years ago. So that's why I'm glad to be alive now making films in a time of high technology and several cinematic breakthroughs with high digital cameras and just very lightweight equipment and the it's opening up a whole new realm to people of making movies like they did in the old days, very low cost, competing with the big, big budget movies, but using small equipment to tell the same story. Hi, welcome to the humble estate of Dennis Woodruff, where, as you see, my solar dishes are going 24 hours a day to broadcast my voice all over the world and my message to buy my movies. It's very simple. Just get out of your chair and go out and buy my movies. You only need to see my movies. That's why I have all this high-tech technology to broadcast through the universe. I've spent $100 million just here alone, and this is my new motorhome I just purchased for uh, filming on location. And my production crew is waiting in, their, uh, in the guest, guest estate and uh, I just wanted to introduce you to my new compound. And it's equipped with the latest technology of Bob wire fences and uh, chain link, so no one can penetrate the Woodruff compound, the genius behind the Woodruff compound. I'm very rarely even seen outside these gates, so I just wanted to give you the opportunity to see firsthand for yourself all the enjoyment that I have from my toys. As you see, my, my uh, mansion is surrounded by these big solar dishes that broadcast all over the world. Every moment of my life is on TV all over the world, and these are sending it out, sending it out all over the world, giant cones pushing 
my voice as we speak into the universe and bouncing off different satellites so that I can be heard at every moment. My life is so important to people around the world that every moment is being broadcast at this moment to every place in the universe right now with all these tones. And it's happening right now as we speak, so thank you for coming to the Woodruff compound and visiting my humble home. I hope you like it. I figured out a scheme. It's total madness. It's genius to brainwash the entire universe to buy only my movies. I broadcast 24 hours a day through their brainwaves. You will buy Dennis Woodruff movies. You will buy all of them. You will buy them every day. Through this, I send out the message to all people even when they sleep and it penetrates their deep subconscious mind and they can't even think of anything else except run to the store and buy his movies. Buy his movies. And then this one over here gets them the second. Buy his movies. And then they hear it back over here. Buy the movie. And then they hear it back over here. Buy the movie. And they're totally bombarded and everybody's going, I gotta buy his movie! Oh, I can't take it anymore! I bought thousands already! I'm broke! I can't take it anymore! I, I think I like the wall. The name will go right on the wall, but I think what we're going to need is 10 or 20 more ticket booths to accommodate all the people, and maybe 9 or 10 or 50 lanes along here for people that'll be lined up to see the movie, maybe all the way like a couple, 10 miles or something. Bigger than Star Wars, just huge. Dennis Woodruff, the movie, premiering people from all over the world crowded around the movie theater. Millions of people trying to get in, buy tickets, they can't even get tickets. They're scalping them for $5 million a piece. Dennis Woodruff, the movie. The greatest epic motion picture to ever hit the big screen. And all of everybody's asking, what is it about this guy that people like? Why do they want to see his movies? It's so confusing. What has this man done to be so good? Why is he so funny and interesting? We don't understand. <laughs> we spent $100 million to make a movie and he spends $10,000 and makes a hundred billion dollars. Why? That's what I say. Because it is. Because it is. That's why. <laughs> Jay, Jay Leno, Jay Leno, yeah. Uh, listen, I got another call coming in. I don't know if I can do your show. I'm kind of booked up. Hold on. Who is it? David, David Letterman. Hey, Dave, how you doing? Well, if you want to know the truth, you've been getting kind of cornball lately. Listen, Jay's on the other line. I got to get back to his call, but uh, I don't know. I'm all booked up until next summer, all right? So give me a call. I don't know if I want to do it. You know, I'm kind of busy making movies. Bye, Dave. Bye. Say hi to the wife and kids. Jay. Yeah, Jay, listen. Uh, I'm kind of booked up. You know, I'm doing a show in uh, South America, and then I got one. Uh, I got to go over to China to do a talk show. But I don't want to do any more talk shows. You know, I'm a very private person, Jay.
wondering, my name is Dennis Woodruff, I'm kind of famous, and I was wondering if I could get on the guest list for Mr. Hefner's party. I think I could really liven it up. These are some of my pictures and my publicity. And my phone number is 323-441-9719. I'm in the tour book of LA. And uh, I really have a lot of respect and admiration for Mr. Hefner. And I hope you can check out my website, Two Rad Productions, and see some of my little movies that I made. Excuse me, sir? Yeah. All the, all the office staff is gone for the day. You're going to have to check back in with them tomorrow. Okay, sir. Thank you very much. Have a nice evening. My number is 323-441-9719. I'll check back, and I'm sorry to bother you, sir. Have a good evening. Yes, sir. Wow, I'm in, man. I'm in. Oh, rad, man. We're going to meet some chicks. Oh, man, this is awesome. I did it, man. Party naked, dude. Woo! and move forward because this is going to be the biggest ass kicking war you've ever seen in your life. I mean, probably half of you guys, I want you to die and I want to make it look real, okay? So now you're leaving the spaceship and I want you to stay together and go forward and kill the enemy, all right? On action, kill the enemy. And I want to give it, I want to get it on the first take, all right? You got it? Okay, you guys are great, man. Well, let's do it again, okay? One more time. Ready? Action! Well, when I was growing up, I used to work in a car wash, and, you know, I felt like I was acting and directing at the same time with the cars. And every car that went through, in my mind, I imagined it to be like a small, short movie. And that's actually what I started out doing, is filming short movies in the car wash. And I would sometimes just have the car come in and then go through the process, and by the end, I'd show me polishing it. And that was how I first learned to be an actor, is by uh, polishing and then talking to people about how their car looked and what, how they wanted it in detail. And that takes a lot of acting ability. And then I moved up to the gas pump, and I really got a lot of experience talking to people. And one time, I even caught this lady's car on fire. I was smoking a cigarette, and filling her car up with gas and I flicked, I flicked the cigarette and her whole side of her car caught on fire. It was very embarrassing. I got, I, I got suspended for a week. But um, she was nice about it, you know. She didn't get too angry. They are going to put me in the movie. They're
Welcome to Hollywood. My name is Dragon. I wish to tell you about a very good friend of mine, an associate performer named Dennis Woodruff. Very interesting gentleman. He's very, been working very hard in the film and theater industry. And tonight, you're going to get to meet him. He's done the work he's done. And found out the uh, interesting eccentricities uh, that he's had has made him stand out quite well in the Hollywood community as a performer. Cut. go to the uh, uh, film festival? I went to uh, Sundance Film Festival and I, uh, I actually entered, uh, we entered, my producer uh, entered Idling Brando and not only the Sundance and Slamdance, we got into Slamdance Film Festival, but we also decided, well, we put it in a movie theater for seven seen by the entire Academy and judged for the Academy Awards. And then we actually entered it in Slam Dance, went out there, and I promoted it for seven days on the streets with postcards. We had a major screening with about 60 people, standing room only. And it was, it was, it was well received. There were a few skeptics in the crowd, but overall I think we were
shoot at each other now, the aliens, let them take advantage. Okay, action! Good, perfect, yeah, moving, action, more, more, energy, energy, energy! Okay. Yeah. When you hit the big time, you know, you're gonna need to be sending flowers to thank your agent and all that kind of stuff, so that's a... Hey, thanks, man, I appreciate it. I'll order a dozen. You know, it's amazing to me, too, is like, I can tell my popularity is growing quite rapidly. Because every time I go to a gas station, people come from all over to take my picture and to tell me that they've seen my movies and they enjoy them and they want my autograph. And a lot of times I'll pose for pictures with people from out of town, tourists. And literally, I've had gas station attendants get very annoyed because I'll be blocking whole entourage in this gas station for 20, 30 minutes before I actually leave. And I try to be as courteous as possible. But it's amazing. Uh, I get to where I can't even move. I'm blocked in with cars all around me and people taking pictures. And, Hi, I like your car, man. Uh, what, you know, do you make movies? Are you an actor? Yeah. You know, and, 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 and it's, it's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun, and uh, it really makes my day a lot better. That I, I know I'm getting more popular. People are knowing about me, hearing about me. Want to join my fan club? I have actually seven people in my fan club now, and I estimate by the end of the year to have at least twelve more. So things are looking up. <laughs> the entire infantry. There's only a few aliens left. Run for your life. Run for your life. Go. Run. 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 And run up the beach. Go. Go. Cut. Red. Action. I was wondering, sir, I was thinking uh, I'm making a new movie and uh, how much are these cars? This might be perfect for my next... $2.99? $6.99? I like that. Can you give me a break on it? I might be able to use two of them. Maybe could you give me two for ten? I'll come back. You'll have them next week, right? Okay, because I'm going to start my new, new movie next week, and I might need a couple of these. Okay, thank you. I just go down to the local uh, thrift store and they have a little car lot there in the parking lot and some of the cars have smashed and chills and they've been donated to charity and I pick out one or two and drive it home and take the tags off this car and put it on the other one. And I'm usually good for at least three months before I get pulled over. So and uh, the neighbors came out and they caused kind of a ruckus and were screaming at me. 
and one of them threatened to sue me if I didn't clean up the mess. And after I finished the paint job, this is what it looks like. And I think it came out real nice, don't you? And now I've put my pictures. I've put these little frames on there with my pictures and uh, different poses. And I put the film reel on there. And this is a clapboard I found in the dumpster. And uh, this is a film can and a little ornate frame that I got at the 99 cent store. And I also have my promotion for my big movie that's been finished. And my website on there. And um, there it is on the back. And uh, I was kind of stoned last night and I forgot I left my coffee on top of the roof. And if you notice, there's a coffee stand. I've got to clean that up. And then I put this pipe on there. And this is an old Oldsmobile 1970. And when I got this car, it was pr practically in showroom condition. And I, I met this guy a couple days ago and he goes, Man, you're one of a kind, Woodrow. Every time I see you, man, you got a different car. And they're all screwed up. of my mother, Betty, Betty Rhone Carmen, and uh, at the time she used to be like a model, and now she's uh, retired, and this is a picture when she was probably in her 20s, and uh, she was a Claire All model, and she encouraged me to come to, uh, to Hollywood, now she's a big star of the silver screen. I've been in Hollywood now over 18 years. I'm the most deserving actor in all of Hollywood for my big break. 
I would have to say that Brando influenced me to think very deeply and strongly about acting and the cinema and the world and about my life and my future. You can do it. You can do it. You can be a great actor. When I was only 18, I first saw Mr. Brando in a movie called On the Waterfront. I somehow could see myself in his shoes. I said to myself, Dennis, you can do it. Why don't you give it a chance? Why don't you seek it out? Why don't you search the earth to find your chance? You can do it. You can do it. You can be a great actor. Anyone can be a great actor if they try hard enough, if they feel compelled. So I sought it out. I came to Hollywood to make it in show business. They call me a symbol of Hollywood, a symbol of what Hollywood represents. The dream of coming to Hollywood with a dream and very little money in your pocket and sticking to it no matter what to make it. It concerns me that the soul has left Hollywood, the soul of enlightenment. So then I must bring it back with my bright colored cars, my outfits, and my personality. I knew going on traditional cattle calls was never going to do it for me. So I knew I had to do something more spectacular, more phenomenal, more wonderful than that. I used to think that maybe I should be a drag queen so that I could get all kinds of attention from people. Even though I really wasn't a drag queen, just to dress up, just to blow people's minds. So instead of doing that, I decided, why don't I decorate my car and make my car look like a drag queen so that I could drive it around like the drag queen mobile. It's fun, and it's also kind of funny. <laughs> Are my methods unsound? <laughs> Can you imagine my cars now in the Peterson Auto Museum? I never would have believed it until it happened to me. Can you imagine if you were an artist and your car ended up in a museum? Or an actor or whatever? Everybody aspires to be in a museum someday. And then I thought back after that, after I dropped off the car and I thought of me sleeping in my car and finding cockroaches crawling around and finding out that they were actually nesting in my wind-up alarm clock. Sometimes when I'm driving my car down Hollywood Boulevard, I visualize Tuffy, my dog, and I. Tuffy, the wonder dog, and Dennis actually lifting off the ground and I see the Woodruff mobile flying through the sky like a magic carpet ride. Cast me, cast me. Would somebody please cast me and my dog Tuffy? It's kind of difficult for Tuffy and me to live in this car, but at least for now it's a safe place to live and it's really kind of like home for him. He kind of like protects the car, and when people come up to the car, he'll start barking at them. But uh, in Hollywood, you know, you need some place to crash. So. I usually park my car every night at the Hollywood sign on Beechwood Drive. And the neighbors have gotten used to me being there, so they just kind of ignore me. And hoping that maybe I'll run into somebody that can give me a job. That's how you are in Hollywood. You just try to hang out and let the dream happen. Like last week, Spike Lee saw me driving right on this street and said, pull over, we want you in our movie. So you never know what's going to happen. The button lady I first met when I came to Hollywood, she seems to be around. And I, I wondered what she was doing here. And I realized that she was one of the byproducts of Hollywood not really appreciated by the establishment but born by the tourists. Okay, I have been in, I have been in this country since 1948, in California since 1953. I'm doing this 17 glorious years. Oh, all my 
my God. <laughs> Maybe you deserve You better some say that again. Word. You know, I love God. I'm a God chosen. I'm not a woman's In actuality, she created her own character. So she's actually a real, true to life actress in her own way. Very natural, very down to earth, and very real. I don't like Chinese theater anymore because they don't let me go see the movie. Why? I don't know, they said the way I dress. I relate to the button lady because she's so beautiful and that she's so natural and childlike. It would be terrible to change her, but leave her natural in her habitat. great to be in Hollywood every day and see how great everything is. And I wish people would dress better, don't you? I was married for about three years, and uh, it just didn't last, so we got divorced. But we were arguing a lot, and she didn't like the idea that I wanted to pursue show business. And mainly because it wasn't a steady income. She wanted like $1,000 a month coming in all the time so she could buy her little th things and dresses and stuff. And the funny part about it is she didn't actually want to work herself. She wanted me to take care of everything. So I guess marriage wasn't really what it seemed like it would be. So I think it's better for me to be single and kind of a loner than having some wife hanging around me, nagging me all the time. At least my dog, he never talks back or anything. He's always there for me and just easy going. Doesn't have big demands. Yeah, I'd like to find Miss Bright, somebody with an open mind that's very adventurous. Is there a producer out there who can discover me? Who could cast me in your film? I feel my dad's presence around me, even now. Even though he's not here, he's in heaven. I feel that he's guiding me. And in some ways, he might still be here in his spirit. Well, hello there. My, it's been a long totally insane, that your methods are unsound. Are my methods unsound? Horror, horror, horror has a face. You must make a friend of horror. I remember this drive-in theater and others like it. When I was a child, I used to come to these theaters to get away from it all. It all started when I was barely 18. 
I somehow could see myself as being drawn into it and wanting to be a part of the canvas. They don't realize that I'm an icon in the making. I'm very concerned with the way the industry might perceive me, even in the wrong way. I'm something that's handmade. I'm not something that's manufactured. I want to do great things with my life, and without people's acceptance, I can't go forward. And my approach is completely different, and that's what sells in movies. If you look at a movie that's a hit, it's something out of the clear blue sky that's totally unique. Like the dinosaur picture with Spielberg. It was, it was totally out of left field. It was completely not expected. And that's what I am. I'm completely out of left field, unexpected. I think it's time for some new people to get a chance, not the same 15 actors working over and over and over and over again. Hey, could you take a vacation so some new people can start? My mom is old now and my grandmother is almost passing. And they've seen me through some pretty tough times and they've heard the story over and over about how I'm gonna make it in show business. And I hope that I can make it by the time before my grandmother passes away and that my mother could share a little glory for the times that she's hoped and prayed for me to make it and to get work. My future is bright. My future is very positive. I'm becoming more and more of a stronger focus in Hollywood, and I'm getting more work, and I'm very soon going to be taken seriously. I'm hoping that Paramount, I'm going to give them a shot at discovering me. I wonder if Marlon Brando has ever seen me in Hollywood, and if he cares that I'm even here, or if he would even give me the opportunity to work with him. Well, I'd like to say the old saying is to be at the right place at the right time. But I'm trying to figure out where the right place is and where the right time is. I can't figure that out, so I just keep driving around.
I'm going to have breakfast. I'm going to work. And then you better believe I'm coming right back here. I'm going to cook dinner for you tonight. I want to make you special. Well, if you're cooking, I'm going to show you special. Jack? Yeah. Are you sure that's all? Yeah, yeah, that's all, thanks.
bring the lunch to Sally. Congratulations, it's a girl. Ma'am, would you like to hold your child? Ma'am? Kill her. Southbound side of the 110, the Harbor Freeway gauge, an earlier crash cleared of... Down, sacked by Sam! Rogers are going to win the road for Radio Korea. Radio Korea is legal to send a refund to you. Today, a high of about 70 degrees in downtown L.A., 72 in Pasadena. Los Angeles de Los Angeles informa la emoción del baseball en el first... and I was born in Mexico City, and I moved to Los Angeles in 1959. Hi, I'm Loretta, Loretta Lorraine. I was born in Miami, Florida. I came to Los Angeles in 1967. I'm 55 years old and still here with the people. I am very well known in Los Angeles. Niña, dame el vestido que está ahí quintando. Since I was born, I want to be a performer. I want to be nothing else but be on stage in front of the light. Hold on for a minute. She, she knocked my, my feathers down. I love my feathers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ay, chica. I was attracted to the Angeles because there's more opportunity for shows, more glamour, closer to Las Vegas. You know, that's very interesting for my type of career or for what I do. I always wanted to come to L.A. because I saw it on TV, the fame, the, the stars, the, the people, and I, I guess I wanted to be a star myself. No, I used to uh, work in Miami. I was in Miami like about three months ago, and I was in a Spanish TV show. But I like Los Angeles better. It's like more freedom. People are more understanding. I mean, like New York. New York is nice. But I don't like it because of the weather. When it's hot, it's too hot. When it's cold, it's too cold. 
I start performing in Mexico City with the ballet for clerical Mexico. I was very young. And that's where I started my career as a male dancer. And then from there, I moved into female impersonation. I started performing about um, seven years ago. I got disappointed with a lot of uh, people because it's not, uh, it's not professional like it used to be. I'm used to professional, professional stuff. I used to work in Las Vegas as a show girl at the Silver Sleeper with a company named Kenny mm, Care Show. I used to play share. I've been a nurse. I've done nursing. I've done, um, I worked in bars. Um, one of the other ones I've done, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna say that on TV. <laughs> one that I've, one of my, uh, one of the oldest profession I've done, but I'm not gonna mention that one. I love professional men. Besides me, I love um, me. <laughs> no, I love. No, I love. No, I love. No, I love. We support each other, but there's a lot of jealousy. I see a lot of uh, jealousy. About costumes, about performances. If somebody's doing better than another one, they try to cut it, you know, they try to interfere in it. I am in Hollywood Show Queen. 1996? 1997. I was a judge. <laughs> oh, good ass. But she wasn't my favorite. favorite. She? Honestly, she wasn't my favorite. <laughs> she was a gay girl. Yeah, other people get jealous about my wardrobe that's more expensive than their wardrobe, and, or my wig, you know, that I'm more professional and they don't like that. Then I have more years in this business that they do. No, she was oh, a thousand dollars and uh, my girl had a guy for that night. The one I owned. <laughs> now, if I knew the things they knew now, you know, we didn't have hormones when I was starting. We didn't have uh, silicone and all this. This came out later. That's when I got it, a little bit later, when I learned of it. But a lot of the girls not nowadays, they have it all. They have it all. It's changed a lot. A lot of the girls talk to me about surgery. They ask me where to go, who to see, uh, what, what doctors are good, what doctors are not. We all give each other uh, tips and everything because it's good, it helps a girl. It helps a girl to go to the right doctor because sometimes you do have reactions of bad doctors too. And it's also good to give somebody advice to go do it right. Not to, do, not to make a mistake, like a lot of people have made mistakes. Oh, that's beautiful, darling. Are those yours? Yes, mine. How much you pay for them? Look up. One each? Okay. Yeah. For one more? Thousand. 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 I've had my face done, I've had silicone in my breasts, I've had tips, I've done, I've done something to improve myself. I was trying to get away from my family because they didn't accept me the way I was. So it was better here without them than I could do whatever I wanted to do. My mother and my father, 100%. I give them credit that, um, my, I've seen a lot of, a lot of transactions where they go through their parents. I just thank God that I didn't have to go through it took them a long time, but they saw that they thought it was no future doing what I was doing. And then finally they started saying, you know, I helped them economically. So they saw, wow, well, no, she's making good, you know, got my house, my car, my business. And the big thing I told them, I got the sex change. So you see this. You take me as I am, or that's it. And they go, well, I guess we're going to have to fix it. 
I've always been a woman. I've always uh, feel that I was a woman in a lot of ways. I'm not saying that I'm, I'm a woman in, in physical or in I'm, I'm a woman mentally. I'm a woman inside me. I live my, my life as a woman. And if I get my respect as a woman, I think that I am a woman. Okay, this is one of my dresses that I'm designing for this year. This is, this is the, the hat to go with it. I am lucky to have a small feet. I'm seven. Honey, I have small feet. See, I have small feet. I wear size eight. I okay. use my mother's shoes. <laughs> I do not wear a size, big size. I find size for a woman's size. I do got a small little feet. Yeah, I used to put my mother's skirts and play around with it. No ponalo bien, chica. Ya sí, okay. Chica was cute, but she didn't know to what extent I was gonna go. You know how far I was gonna go. They accept me who I am. They all know who I wh what I am. They accept that. There's there's more worser things in this world going on right now than and somebody worrying about who's wearing who's who's wearing mom's dress or who's wearing uh, sister's dress. Hi, my name is Kimberly and you're watching Mosaic on K C E T. What's up? Hey, John. Do you want food? No, it's 276-4099. Alright, we're ready to go. Okay, All right. ready to go? Yeah. I'm Catherine Craven. Hello, I'm Denise Coleman. How you doing? I'm Brandon Nash. Hi, I'm Tika John. I wasn't allowed to attend graduation today because I have a uh, little bit of a temper. Um, but I graduated from Beverly Hills High School today. These girls. Yeah, yeah we, we graduated graduate today. I had lost my temper in front of the principal through a pen. Well, because, of, because, because they wouldn't let her go to prom. They wouldn't let me go to prom. Yeah. So. <laughs> Due to excessive unexcused out. <laughs> I'm what we call a bad kid. <laughs> yes, I grew up in Beverly Hills. I grew up in Beverly Hills. I did. Um, I didn't grow up in Beverly Hills, actually. This was only my second year. No, I did not grow up in Beverly Hills. <laughs> um, originally, I was born in the Valley. I did not grow up in Beverly Hills. I have lived in this small town my whole life. I have too. And I've tried not to let it affect me, but um, it hasn't, you know? So, <laughs> that's all I can say for myself. I'm pretty proud of that. So you did live your whole life? In Beverly, in Beverly. I did live my whole life in Beverly Hills. These are my best friends right here, <laughs> you know? I mean, girls. <laughs> and then I have a couple other girls that are like my best friends that have like different little cliques. It's so clicky. Like yeah, clicks. everybody's in the class. I mean, there's a really bad stereotype about Beverly Hills, how, you know, like people are really mean over here, but like that, like obnoxious, <laughs> like that, <laughs> exactly like that. But, um, I don't know. I just, I like the, the area. Yes, ladies. Yes. I'm a part of them. I'm in their group. Okay, come Can on come in. in. Come on in. There are some people, like, you look at them, you know they're Beverly people. You call them Beverly people, and they kind of like do all like the things. Not all of them, but like kind of some of those things that, that you kind of see like on Clueless. I, 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 I sat next to this girl graduation, by the way. There's only a certain amount of people that like act the way that like the stereotypical Beverly Hills people do, and those people tend to stick out. And those people are the ones that get all the attention. I, I have no clue why. And they they're the ones that are in the hot spot. We're not like the regular Beverly girls. We don't stick around the party scene too much. We come in, cause a whirlwind, and then leave. My friends that don't live in Beverly Hills and go to other schools um, classify me as being bougie. And that word is kind of like um, you're, you, you hang around with the upper class people and you know kind of see the finer things in life. Usually they've been given so much at such a young age. Most of the people that go to Beverly Hills High School are, at least they come from a wealthier background than others. And I don't really think, uh, and I think that leads to them not be taking things more for granted. And that basically means that they're not really ambitious. Oh no, we're like totally like Beverly Hills Antoinette. We don't have okay. Avion in our fountains. No one's one. walking around with What you see in no Beverly Hills not is going out. Yeah. No ballet, yeah. nothing. It's no like, escalator. It's worse than Fairfax. It's worse than Fairfax. Oh no, we're like totally like Beverly Hills Antoinette. Here, here, the there are a lot of things that are similar about sitcoms and all the jokes and the movies and Beverly, but 
then again, there are a lot of things that aren't. I don't know, people just like they have the stereotype of that our school is like like full of marble and crystal and it's chandeliers not. and it's, it's really not. not. It's really not. We're lacking so many things yeah. as well, like like every other school. Granted there are, you know, a few people that run around and would remind you of certain characters, but not the whole group of kids. Not everybody. No. Not there like are that. the exceptional few. Beverly Hills 921, no, it's just like an exaggerated thing. Clueless is thing. the worst. Like, clueless. Exactly. They like exaggerate. Yeah, I think the, the, media, the, media, the media thrives on um, like certain things that can be easily made fun of. There's a lot of different people here. Yeah. It's money that gives us the rent. Yeah. Yeah, it's basically money. No, I do not come from a family with a lot of money. No, I don't know. <laughs> My family doesn't have any money. My family has no money. See, that's, oh where, the, that's where the stereotypes, we have to prove them wrong because... <laughs> we do not live in big mansions with like pillars out in front. You know, I live in a little apartment. <laughs> All of us live in apartments. You I know. know. There's a lot of us, like me personally. I come from Eng I came. I come from Inglewood. I just tra I com commute every day to Beverly Hills, and you know, it's it's better. I guess it's, it's you know, you get a better opportunity going to Beverly Hills, but Beverly Hills is nothing like what TV says. It's just regular kids that go to school, you know. Of course, there's some good cars and people are rich and everything, but everything else is just basically the same. We're the same as other, any other kids that go to any other school. It just happens that we live in Beverly Hills. I don't think that separates us from any other. Well, I think um, it shouldn't. There's also another term called an Oreo, which means you're black on the outside, but you're really white inside. Um, uh, I always get hassled about it all the time. My friends are like, you're not really black, you know, you go to that white school. I wish that the people weren't so judgmental, because a lot of people have prejudgments about, you know, what people look like and, you know, what they're interested in. And I don't know, to me that's just messed up, you know? I think that people here have to learn not to be so ignorant and to have more tolerance for people who are not exactly like them. We have a wide range of people at our school, though. We have people who come from out of district also. It's not just people who live in Beverly Hills. Oh, no, I'm on a multicultural program where they um, they know that I live in Inglewood, but I'm on that program, so I get to go there without, you know, any hassle. Yeah, they're constantly trying to catch people. The, the like, grinch lady that lives in the, the attendance office calls up people who don't live in L.A. just to see if they're, they live at, actually live at the address they gave. Yeah. And sometimes they're caught and they're sent to another school. But they'll be back. <laughs> If I could change one thing about Beverly Hills, I'd change the entire just aspect of it, how everyone views Beverly Hills as this perfect place, and how all the people are perfect, and they're all rich, and they all run around as you know, these perfect princesses. And it's not true. We all have different ways of living our lives, and it's not always like the glamorous way that TV makes it out to be, and I'd like to change that. I think our school has like a, an amazing racial mix of many different backgrounds. Um, which makes it more interesting. I just heard my name. We'll go out in a minute. Okay. When I was like younger, I had to uh, I had to take the bus like three times just to get into Beverly Hills High School. I mean, uh, we use like we use like different addresses and stuff like that. I graduated, so I don't care if they. <laughs> 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 it's all good. But I mean, there's like a lot of people that like are like are from their own country. Like they're 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 new. Like I mean, what do I say? Like they're foreign. Like. The Persian community is going to know each other The forever. best community. We're not like Seriously. the American community, community who they go off to college and they leave when they're 18. We, the Persian we stay community. close. Most of us stay close. Persians, together. Persians are always close. Always. Friends forever. Life. Family life. life. In 10 years, um, I plan to be a great sports medicine doctor. I want to open up my own facility and help all types of athletes. And hopefully I'll still be running track to, you know, going to the Olympics, running professionally, hopefully. I mean, some little youngins running around, so I could, you know, <laughs> a little husband. <laughs> and, you know, I really want to open up, like, a center for underprivileged kids and everything. That would really be my dream. Since I just graduated, I just want to usually have a, a fun this summer before I go off to college. Because uh, you only, like, have lived these years once, and I want to, like, look back and say I have a real fun time. I think kind of disconnected. <laughs> Who's going to unplug me? Thank you. That was Thank really you. good. Thank you. Bye, guys. Bye. Ms. Verna Williams, and I've been living in South Central L.A. for 73 years. 
and you're watching Mosaic. Michael Wu presented me with the plaque that said this is the cleanest corner in Los Angeles. I really do think this is a landmark, and it's not in the center of Hollywood, it's considered Hollywood. Alan Hill, the Gilligan's Island skipper, was a customer. The last time I put an apron on, we had a 30-year celebration, and uh, Alan Hill and his wife, the skipper and his wife, was here. We all wore tuxes, and I, but I wore a red apron. I left Michigan January 2nd, 1946, arrived here January 5th, 1946, three days later, and I've been here ever since. This is a double J burger, so we've got a little extra cheese, and here comes the good chili. It's the best chili in town. I tried Chasen's chili. That's very good, but pickle in the onion. While the cheese is melting, I'm very proud of my, my product. That's our most popular sandwich right there, a double G burger all the way. You don't mind if I take a bite of this, do you? Mmm. Mm. Mm. I don't have any competition. There's only one gay burger. Oh, there, there are many beautiful homes in Los Angeles. I, I was looking in this approximate area, and um, when I saw this house, it was a corner house, and I felt it had possibilities. Um, the diversity of architecture, uh, originality is more prevalent in Los Angeles than, than in many other cities. Well, I had been in the art field for many years, and I decided that uh, three dimensionals is where it's at. And I felt that uh, the largest three dimensional I could do would be to buy property and try to make it as interesting as I could. What we're really doing is we're adding on to the earth. We're, we're enlarging the earth every time we build. And it may somehow make a difference. Someday we may find out that one of the best things we can do for ecology is to add something to the earth. The main idea was really to try to uh, find what can be done in architecture and how, how far can I go with it. And I felt that architecture is the highest form of art. Well, um, the couple that was living in a next door decided to sell, which is an unusual opportunity. <laughs> it doesn't always happen. And they said, wouldn't you like to buy it? And I said, I don't know. The only thing that, that my neighbors were not too delighted about in the beginning was the color. And so I asked them, would they have preferred purple? Well, <laughs> then I remembered an art teacher I had at, art, at the Art Students League. And he said to me, if your canvas isn't big enough for you, Buy another one. That's what he was talking about. <laughs> so after they gave me the fourth time, I bought it. Swedish furniture, it's also very sleek and simple. I, I like uh, simplicity, sleek, simple lines. Maybe someday the Earth would weigh more than it does now. And if it did, maybe there would be an infinitesimal difference in the gravity of the Earth.
Who knows? A lot of people see me driving around town and they wonder who I am and what I'm all about. Peter Max said that I'm the greatest cultural pop icon since Brando and that my art overshadowed even his paintings and his works of art. I started the car idea about 10 years ago and I followed that up with the t-shirts and the posters and then I had the bicycle and then I added the trailer and I realized that my life was almost like a movie. About 12 years ago I came to Hollywood and really I've been working at it ever since. Every actor needs his own dressing room so I thought you know I'll create my own funky one that I can pull behind my car and save producers $175 a day. They don't have to rent me a dressing room. I already have my own. If you want to be an actor, you have to be in Hollywood. The first time I got the idea of the car is uh, I realized that I needed my car to get around, but also I wanted to make my car like some kind of form of advertising so that I could use it almost like a business card or a trademark or a logo. Well, I've only been working maybe five years professionally in the business as a working actor with a SAG card. I'm not one to want to criticize those who I want to work for, but there is something really missing here, and that is the element of caring about other people and trying to help other people so that their art can be seen. There's got to be some director or producer in there that's going to give me my big break. I only need one. Probably the biggest icon that, was, that I met and inspired me throughout my life to this day is Steve McQueen. Uh, I got a chance to meet him and talk to him, and he seemed like he was taking me pretty seriously. Liberace and Elton John had a big impact on me because they were very colorful, flamboyant, a bit eccentric, but trying to make a statement. The thing about Steve McQueen that was so incredible is that he seemed like he had this aura around him that was really powerful. And uh, everywhere I go, people are always coming up to me and just like, cameras following me around, people taking pictures of me. So I'm wondering, like, do I have this aura that people are aware of that I don't, I'm not aware of? Do I have this, this sense of presence about me that people are affected by me everywhere I go? That's what I admire about others that I've kind of modeled myself after is that we try really hard, like Madonna, to be unique and don't, like, go with the flow, but, like, do something totally different and then keep reinventing yourself and keep moving forward and believe in yourself. This is show business, a business revolving around people who are not normal. Normal, Webster's Dictionary defines normal as people with average intelligence. Who wants to be average? That's what people say that I'm already a Hollywood icon. and. Uh, Shoot, I'll take that if you want to give it to me. Just hearing from another one of our KNX tipsters who says on the 5 northbound just before the 710 interchange, we have another disabled big rig. This one's tying up the right lane. Really, it's the wrong lane, and it'll definitely have your drive wronged back into Orange County as you head into the East Los Angeles interchange this morning. Speeds are, from the Orange County line, about 5 miles an hour. 57 freeway northbound just before the 60 interchange in Dive.
up. Oh, you forgot about us. <laughs> Come on, baby. Make yourselves at home. Brought lots of stuff. Down past the fourth. You're way too far. Hey, I got my cell phone here. Look, hmm? <laughs> but I did have you down for 11. Oh, nine, right? I know I had you down for 11. Wait, I'm just going to go in the bathroom and here right now. Hair for a while. Wait. I don't like what this hair is doing. Why is it the hair will never cooperate when you want it to? Are you going to use one of those aluminum things? What, a reflector? Yeah. No, I don't need it in this space. The light's great here. That last photographer was an absolute genius with, with the aluminum thing. Wait. Honey. What, Mom? Smile. Big smile. I want to see all those pretty teeth. Come on, baby. I am, Mom. <sighs> that's it. That's it. Come on, let me fix this thing over here. Hold on. Ow! Child, do you want to make money or not now? Mm. You better get used to it. Mm. Right? Okay. Now let's put on the hat. Okay. So the way I like to work is this. Um, I look down for a minute or so, and then when I look back up, I snap my fingers. When I snap my fingers, you take the picture, okay? Yeah, sure, whatever it takes for you to feel comfortable. Okay, cool, cool, okay. Mark, how about if we just take a great picture of Mark? Let's just get a nice shot of Mark. Look, now I have to start all over again. You can't interrupt me. Okay. Rico Rita. Are you fucking talking to me? There's nobody else here. You must be talking to me. Robert De Niro. You missed it. When, when, I, when I snap my fingers, that's when you take the picture. Okay? It's about pacing, momentum. You gotta get it. God damn it, answer me! What are you fucking deaf? Pardon me? No, pardon your fucking self, lady! I can't stand you fucking people with your fancy fucking excuses. You can't even wipe your own asses, let alone try to figure out what I'm trying to do up here! James White! You got it. You got it. Cool. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Okay. Seven sisters, seven sisters. Stella! Okay, how soon before we can get these pictures back from us? I got a guy who needs him right away. You'll have proofs tomorrow at noon. Proofs? Uh, proofs, those little tiny pictures they make all on one page. That would be the proof. Oh, good. I just love those little things. If you want me to mark the ones I'd like, I'd be happy to do that. No, that's cool. I can pick them out. I'm in charge of her career. I'm sorry I'm late, but I couldn't find anything to wear because I have gained so much weight. I quit smoking. Do you know I gained 167 pounds? Do you know what 167 pounds is? That's another person. I gained you. That's how much weight I've gained. I was in the grocery store. I was at Ralph's. I ran into somebody I hadn't seen in a while. She said, girl, what'd you do, swallow somebody? 
the hell? I swallowed up a whole bunch of somebody. Sarah Lee and Betty Crocker and Mrs. Phil. I have got, I have gained so much weight. None of my clothes will fit. I couldn't even find a bra to put on. I had to put on a harness so I could lift and separate because my breasts are now size 42 triple D. And it's all because I quit. Do you know what a 42 triple D is? That's not even, that's da da damn. That's how big my titties are. I, I can't even get a job to save my save my life. I can't get an audition to save my life. You know, have you seen the kids they, they, they cast nowadays? Huh? Whew. Back in the days, there was um, there was me, there was Robert, there was um, Parker, Parker, there was um, David. Yeah. Back in the days when 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 there was still art in television. Huh? Yeah. So what I need from you, what I need from you is for you to take a shot of me that will just you know knock them dead. That that's what I need. Knock them dead. Um, you know sport? Okay, okay. Okay, here's what we'll do. I'll grease them up, I'll sit them down, she's just one by one, okay? But I want to grease them because it really shows off their muscles, especially the deltoids. And I only want about ten shots this time, okay? Just ten because the bill from last month is too much. Tommy, we just booked him an actual commercial. He's going to be used. We're so proud of Tommy. Oh, and, and, and Amy, she's the woman's, Amy, Amy, she's the world's woman's rouge champion. So she's going to be huge also. And, and I really like her. She's very important to me. So just get a couple of really good shots of her, OK? And uh, OK, just a couple of things. Oh, just a couple of things. Um, arm folded, no. I don't want them looking like Mr. Clean. Also, you know when they squat? No more. Don't like that. I don't like that. Uh, although I do want you to shoot them from above. And listen, could you blow out the face just a little bit? I want the skin smooth, but not like Lucille Ball from Maine, you know. And uh, oh, do your thing. I love you all. Well, I think it's really beautiful, Fern. I'm just not liking it, that's all. What does your agent think of it? I'm changing agents right now, so I'm sort of directing my career myself. Look, I'm pretty lenient about reshoots and stuff, because I want you to be happy. But I need to know specifically what needs to be different. I just don't look like a movie star. Now, I have to look like a movie star. It's absolutely crucial. Just... Normally, like, when, when I do a photo shoot, it's, it's, like, ridiculous. I get so amped up for a week, so by the time I finally get to the shoot, I have to, like, drink a six-pack or, you know, smoke a joint or something. And I hate beer. I mean, it's, it's just so putrid. So, actually, I, you know, drink a wine cooler or something. They taste better, but... Okay, check me out. I thought this would be good for a, uh, for a young dad. <laughs> okay. Young lawyer. Huh? Right? Strong. Simple. Smooth. Right? Young pimp. Right, see? Pimp. It's pimp time. Get it? I'm sorry, I'm late. Um, do I look like doggy do? Uh, so I've been up all night, and so I just feel like, ugh, you know? My eyes are probably really swollen. Um, my boyfriend broke up with me, so, you know. <laughs> um, anyway, just, it's better anyway. You know how it is, it's just so much better. Anyway, I was thinking of, um, no. Okay, I was thinking that, um, that I could do, I uh, even, I, uh, I was, on my way over here, I was thinking that I could just get some normal headshots taken, yada, yada. And then I was thinking that, um, my boyfriend's been bugging me about being with this friend of mine. And last night, finally, I was like, I'm not doing it ever. And this all, you know, went into the whole breakup and that I was bubblegum. And, um, and I just want to, um, I was thinking of taking some really wild photos and just exposing a part of myself. And I don't know, I was thinking that maybe, um, I could, um, you know, just get naked, you know, and maybe you could just take some, I mean, I don't know, I just thought maybe, you know, I could 
you know, I mean, I know, I don't know, I was thinking I could do something, you know, um, sexy. I'm, I'm not, I'm not, I thought, I'm so freaked out. <laughs> but anyway, I was thinking I could do some sexy photos, and then I could, um, put them in my apartment, and, um, when he comes home, I'll just be like, these are my sexy photos. <laughs> um, then I was, you know, this is so <laughs> not me. Um, I'm just so, so not me. I'm so not me. So not me. <laughs> um, I'm a character actress. Screw that. It's about us. It's about, like, what we're going to do. And, in fact, I would say that my agent sort of, like, works for me, so I don't really know why he'd be saying that we should be doing certain things, because we didn't even discuss this. This was my idea. Although he kind of, you know, referred me to you. Nothing sporty, but something commercial, one commercial shot, smiling, you know, tooth and all that. And then something really serious, you know, something just subtle. Just me. Just, you know, I don't have to, like, do any certain thing. Just me and you. That's it. Just us. This is about us. So the agent, you know, the agent, okay, can just be an agent. All right. My Vedic astrologer was telling me that, like, I'm completely photogenic right now. Shed, shed, shed all the materialistic negativity. My yogi, Ben Estradaba, he's, he's told me that I need to release more and I really need to show because I've been holding it inside and really dwelling on, on my inner soul too much. And that's really heavy. It's bad. And so, that. so I used to model, and I tried for a while, but it really affected my spiritual supremacy. Do you see it? Find the center of you and bring it in. You can project. I know it's none of my business, but I noticed that you smoke and you drink coffee. And it's just like battery acid for the soul, man. You just, you got to let it go. Oh. Um, just so you know, my karma sometimes projects a little heavily from this side, so. You make a very good cup of tea, I tell you that. <laughs> oh, I better take my hat off. You'll never photograph me with that old thing on. Oh, yeah. It's been a wonderful day, hasn't it? May I ask you a question? Well, of course. What advice would you have for a young actor just starting out? Well, that's very difficult advice. I mean, one could say, no cowards, don't put your daughter on the stage, Mrs. Worthington. Don't put your daughter on the stage. That's my first advice. You know, I've done so much theater, but it's like, I don't even know if I should keep it on the resume anymore, you know, because nobody cares in this town. Unless they see some, like, sitcom, like it was Seinfeld, unless they saw Seinfeld, you know, then you are nobody. My second advice is if you have to go with it, you have to question yourself. You know, I keep playing fools and everything. Fools are great, but I want to play like, um, you know, a lawyer or a doctor, maybe a brain surgeon working on somebody's brain, cutting out the brain, and then putting it back in, something like that. I don't know. These things come over me. I don't know. You have to ask of yourself, am I just doing this for glory? You know, already I'm a Hollywood icon known all over the world for ego. Leading men, you know? I mean, all guys, I'm sure they want to play leading men, but the thing is, I can, you know? Like, yes. Or do I have a burning desire to interpret art, to interpret the characters of Shakespeare, Shaw, Ibsen, Strindberg, Chekhov? These are the things that first you must really understand and learn before you can even become an actor. And then you have to have an affinity with life to understand all of life. I know last night I had this extraordinary dream uh, that I, I was at the Royal Academy of Dramatic Art where I started. I had this dream that I was transported to my youth again. 
Maybe it's an old man, corpse or something like that. I don't know, but I had those thoughts. I thought of myself, young, ambitious, 18. I never played the great romantic roles. Um, I did later on in life when I was too old, ironically enough. But I played all the clowns of Shakespeare. Now, there is, there is just one thing. If ever you enter into the world of comedy, you have to tell the truth. You see people laughing at things that are cheap, insignificant. It is the heart that really counts. Smile while you're making it, laugh while you're taking it. Even though you're faking it, nobody's going to know. I always live by that. I love saying that because, you know what? I'm always faking it, you know what I mean? Take my picture. I'm through.
I'm just a little guy in the world, a little guy named Dennis Woodruff, who has a dream to become a movie star. Dennis Woodruff kæmper for at blive stjerne i Hollywood. I want to be the biggest movie star in the universe. Is that asking too much? Woodruff har levet her, blandt Hollywoods symboler og ikoner i 22 år nu. Han er 48 og er aldrig kommet rigtig tæt på stjernerne. Give me my Oscar. I deserve it. Hollywood er fuld af mennesker som Dennis Woodruff, der kommer her til med drømmen om at blive den næste store stjerne. De fleste går til bunds snarere end til tops, men de færreste går så vidt som Dennis Woodruff. Hollywood! Woo! Dennis Woodruff, your man! Woo! Get the movie! Woo! Woodruff kører hver dag gennem Hollywood i en bil, der gør reklame for Dennis Woodruff. My name is Dennis Woodruff and I make my own movies and I made a movie about a struggling actor who never gives up his dream. You? Yeah. Woodruffs arbejdsplads er gaden. Her går han alle ugens dage med sin hund Toffy og sine hjemmelavede film. Okay, Toff, let's go. Come on. Hello, ma'am. Have you heard about my movies? Hi, hi. Thank you. Hi. Hi, excuse me. My name is Dennis Woodruff. I make movies. Can I tell you about them? There's no bad language. It's not. It's PG rated. And I really need supporters of my movie. Will you buy one for five dollars and check it out? No, thanks. Sir. Woodruff bliver for det meste afvist, men han sælger også nogle film. There you go. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. So you got one now. Now do you want part two too? No, that's okay. Okay. Thank you very much. Han siger han kan tjene 7800 kroner på en dag, og filmene en hjemmegjort fortælling af med og om Dennis Woodruff. Som barn i biografen drømte Dennis Woodruff sig ind i filmenes verden, siger han. And when I saw a movie, I believed what I was seeing was real, and I wanted to be my life like in a movie. So I wanted my life to be a movie. Mickey Rooney, Toffy. Here's Mickey. Hollywood Boulevard er stedet hvor berømtheder har deres stjerner i fortovet. And Dean Martin. Tusindvis af turister kommer hver dag for at se dem og byen sørger for, at de bliver pudset flotte og blanke. Dennis Woodruff håber, at han en dag kan få sit navn på en af de tomme stjerner. Toffy, here's our star right here, Toff. Look, Toff, it's for us, Toffy. Måske bliver Woodruff aldrig stjerne, men undervejs er han blevet Hollywoods bedst kendte, ukendte skuespiller. Yeah, I've seen him. I don't know what he's been in, though. And he's been trying to get in movies and make movies for a long time. But I think I've heard of him, yeah. Dennis Woodruff siger, at han kan lære en vær at spille skuespil på fem minutter, og han spiller gerne roller fra gamle film. I could have been somebody. I could have been a contender. I could have been somebody with class instead of a bum, Charlie, which is what I am. I'd like to be a vampire from Transylvania. I thought you were my partner, man. You turned on me. But I got one left for you. Boom! Dennis Woodruff har betalt en pris for sin drøm. Han bor i en campingvogn, som mange end ikke ville gå ind i. Woodruff arbejder hele dagen med at sælge sine film, og om aftenen laver han nye kopier i campingvognen. Omkring den står hans historie, biler han efterhånden har slidt op i jagten på sin drøm. Og fra sit hjem kan han se Hollywood-skiltet i det fjerne. You know, uh, Hollywood and me is a love-hate relationship. I mean, sometimes I love it and sometimes I hate it. Hi, my name is Dennis Woodruff. If you don't know already, I I just won this this wonderful award, the Oscar. Det tvivlsomt om Dennis Woodruff nogensinde får en rigtig Oscar-statuette i hænderne, men man behøver egentlig ikke have ondt af ham. There's only one Dennis Woodruff, and that's me. På en måde har Dennis Woodruff faktisk fundet en rolle. Han kan spille her blandt alle berømthederne og stjernerne i Hollywood. I can do a pretty good Dennis Woodruff. Would you like to see it? I'm the king of the world. I'm the king. I'm the king. Yeah. Okay, and I'd like to thank everyone in the world for giving giving me my new star on the Walk of Fame. And these are some of my fans, and we want yeah. to document this moment. I'm the king of Hollywood. I'm the king of the world. Los Angeles er købt på til fest, Oscar-fest. Det ses på gaderne, 
Det ses i butiksvinduerne, og det ses på tv-skærmen. Jim Barry here, live with world-renowned actor Dennis Woodruff with his premiere showing of Idoline Brando. A wonderful film. And here's the star right behind my back, right you here. You know, you look so good. I'll take that for a, as a compliment, Dennis. Jim, you know, Jer Jim, right? Jim, Jim, that's Jim. Right. Yeah, Jim, it's true that um, you're quite a ladies' man, and I was wondering if maybe you could give me some tips, because, you know, aside from having fans and everything, I, I would like to score once You're a little while. short on the women. Trying to bring them to home base, you know what I mean? Yeah. You know, well, get them I think, the rest of the I way. Think, I think home base is a good start. Go to home base. Uh, women love construction people. <laughs> they <laughs> tips. Do. Yeah, they like tips like that. Hang out in the drywall section. That's a good spot. Yeah, I was... I and, was of course, the screws, the nuts and bolts. That's always a great spot for me. Uh, pricing the the electric sanders. And yeah. there was a gorgeous girl next to me. And she I'm said, telling you. She said, man, you have nice cheeks. I said, what? Yeah. She said, I said, you know, I started going like this. Yeah, yeah. Like, I didn't notice. And she goes, no, not those cheeks. She was talking you about me. Gudas Maximus. Huh? Yeah. And I, I was like not a feeling bad... kind of like George Michaels or something. From yeah. That. You have to have a list of stalkers that follow you around and try to... We're trying to create this for you, Dennis. Trying to what? Well, we're trying to create that feeling of hey, what's going to happen right now watch pictures, if you put them all together in sequence, it would be like a little movie, wouldn't it? Yeah. It wouldn't, like a roll of film, if you put it together, would be like a little movie. Yeah, that, that kind of like, that really inspires kind of shady character, but my future is so bright that I have to wear my sunglasses at night. That's some song I heard. And uh, we're also here with my good friend Willard Morgan, who is one of my favorite pals in the industry. And uh, we have Michael Beltrami, who's a renowned uh, European director, filmmaker. Can you come over here just for a second? Tell the public about this new, a little tidbit about this new project. Well, I cannot talk very much about the project because it's still in the process of being, you know, judged and financed in Europe. Right. But it's a project with uh, Dennis Woodrow as a leading actor. Sign it. Yeah. And uh, if everything works out next year in the fall, we should be able to start our shooting. Wonderful. Is it going to be a shooting here or over there? Over here. All right. Yeah. That's and, great. Uh, can you give any comments about you know what you think about LA? And, you know, you're here to. Work. Hey, how are you? Doing? Well, what I think about LA, uh, then it's great to be here. You know, you find a lot of people who are. There's signs everywhere, everywhere you see, all over the world, people are advertising different products. And I'm advertising myself. Dennis Woodruff, the actor, hire me, cast me. at a coffee shop and I said uh, gee how do I uh, how can I be in your movie I'm an actor and he said oh you have to be a big name in Hollywood I said what do you mean a big name he said yeah you have to be a big name before you can get a job so I said okay I'll be here tomorrow so I went home and I painted my name real big on my big black car that I have and I came back the next day and I said hey how do you like it and he goes oh that's not exactly what I meant Da, 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 da. 
Voilà. The head has been sculpted of me to symbolize the American uh, Captain America, as I call myself the hero in the movies. Equipped with my trophies of excellence and Dennis Woodruff in Hollywood, world famous actor, Dennis Woodruff, known actor, make my movie, producer needed to make my movie, born to act, hire me, cast me, also having fun with the concept of getting a job in Hollywood. <coughs> It may come in handy. You know, when I first started advertising, people used to say I was kind of weird, and they used to make fun of me, and none of these buses had any advertising on them. And they kind of like stole my idea for uh, making advertising, and now you see them on all the buses. All the buses have advertising, and yet when I first started, no one had any advertising, and now they're using my idea. They stole my idea. Can you imagine? I've been uh, practicing uh, my directing skills, and I've been working very hard at it, and I know I can be a great director. Uh, would you like to see what I've, what I've learned already? Okay, here are the actors talking. I practice with my dog. All right, Toffee. Tuffy. Action! Wonderful, wonderful. Keep moving. Very natural. Keep moving. Cut! Print! Wonderful! Good Tuffy! Good boy! Oh, you're a great actor. Cut! This is a sample of one of the curbs I painted. This is kind of uh, worn out, but uh, this is an example of painting curbs. And uh, this is, I uh, get $10 for each uh, curb that I paint. And it's a way I can make money and fill my pockets up every day with money and uh, live. action movies and um, I've been practicing would you like to see some of my any producer watching now could probably see my talent my raw talent is height mess with me you're messing with your life you mess with me I twist your head off rip off your head Throw it, so don't mess with me. You heard of the Terminator? I'm the thermometer. I'm gonna rip your head off. More powerful than anything in the universe. I could be your worst nightmare. So don't mess with me. I've done over 160 TV shows, 
and I've not had one call for work, and that kind of bothers me because uh, I would like somebody to watch one of these TV shows and cast me in a movie. Cast me. Give me a chance. God, I know you can hear me. Cast me. Because I think that God is really the main casting director in all this cinema, and I hope he can show me some favor. It's really kind of bizarre that all this actually is working for me. Uh, I never would have thought that I would have accomplished some of the things that I have already. And I think my future is very bright that many more things will happen and good things. And maybe someday I'll have a house in Beverly Hills with uh, my name on it. Service movie star galore. <laughs> 